Hey guys, Jeremy the Tall Trainer here, and um, here's a picture of my family and I at a 5K. We love doing the 5K events. It's a it's a wonderful uh, wonderful distance. You know, it's a, it's a it's a great thing to do and a great cause to support. So if you're doing the say, the virtual 5K to support inclusion in motion, we want to see if we can help you. You know, make it make it the best experience possible. So we've got seven staggeringly common mistakes when it comes to running and walking uh, that people do that uh, that cause all sorts of pain and problems. All right, so we want to make sure we watch out for those. Then we got a sample training week for you of things that you could do, what it would look like to prepare for this, and like a timeline and expectations, you know, for doing a 5K. So let's jump right into it. So. Mistake number one. Here's a picture actually of Sarah and I uh, doing a 5k where I tried to catch her at the end and I'm having a tough time. She's having a wonderful time. Uh, but mistake number one, too many days in a row. So <clears throat> the consequence there is overuse injuries typically to the joints. So that's too many running days, walking days in a row uh, and you, uh, you, you, you beat yourself up too much. And so you don't, uh, you don't get a chance to recover uh, and you, uh, you don't improve as much and uh, you risk injury a lot. All right, so the correction for that is add at least a day of non-run between runs. All right, so this is where cross training comes in. All right, so you don't need to run every day. In fact, the, a lot of the best runners don't do that uh, because they understand and they've been through it a few times. All right, mistake number two. All right, is running or walking now. All right, mistake number two: overstriding uh, equals a hard heel landings. All right, so hard heel landings, and so that is when you when you take too big of a step. You end up coming out and landing on your heel really far. You stretch that stride out too far, all right. You stretch, you stretch it out too far there, and uh, you end up with a harder impact. The consequence is you know, it jars your knee, your back, your hip. You can cause foot pain. Uh, so every impact is a lot harder, all right. So shorten the steps, land more middle of the foot. So the foot shouldn't be reaching out in front of you. Should land underneath you more. Think smaller, quicker steps. Smaller, quicker steps on that will save your body in the long run. The people who are still running in their 80s, you know, jogging in their 80s, <clears throat> you'll notice they take small steps, all right? And I think a lot of times that's what allows them to continue to run at that age, all right? So about 2,000 strikes per mile, you know, and that. So be kind to your foot, you know, uh, you know so that you're not, uh, you're not beating yourself up too much there. So I think that's one of the biggest ones. Overstriding, I see it happen all the time. Watch out for that one. All right, number two, we're talking number two. Yeah, it was number two. Number three, skipping stretch time. All right, so people, you know, they, they don't have much time, so they skip a stretch and they move on. And this one is, is very, very common and causes huge problems with the body as well. All right, all injuries accelerate, uh, especially if you combine it with a seated job or a sedentary time outside of this big activity moment. And it's almost a near guaranteed pain, you know, somewhere, you know, because of this knees, back, you know, any number of places, you know, certainly in those common areas. The correction, add at minimum five minutes at the end of every run or walk. And we've got some resources that we'll add in if you donate or you sign up for the, uh, the community build, uh, you know, for this charity. You know, so for inclusion in motion there, if you will, you know, support this cause, they can, they, they can send that link to you, you know, when you, uh, when you sign up for those things. Mistake number four, slouching. All right. So the consequence is people tend to, tend to slouch forward as they do this stuff. The consequence is piriformis, which is a little muscle under your glute in the back of your hip. And uh, when that thing gets aggravated there, it acts a lot like sciatic pain. All right, so you can actually get some sciatic shooting pain through their neck pain, shoulder pain, all these kind of things come from slouching too. But certainly this, this, uh, this sciatic type of pain and knee pain because when you slouch, you, your knees tend to collapse in more too. All right, so the correction, roll the shoulders back, keep the hips underneath you. So don't, not tipped forward, but keep the hips pulled underneath you as you are uh, walking or, or running. All right, and so uh, it will definitely benefit you Way more that way. <laughs> less pain. I want you know, less pain. All right. Um, the mistake number five, only running. All right. Only running or maybe you could say only walking. All right. The consequence, knees and back mostly, but the feet too. All right. So they get overuse. They get beat up. Lots of impacts. The correction, add in yoga or some long stretches. Some strength training. Uh, really good. So this is where cross training comes in. Get some non-running cardio at least one time per week. So you can get your heart rate up using other exercises. And we did throw a few resources in for that as well you know, for you guys. All right. Mistake number six, 
increasing the distance too quickly. All right, so people tend to uh, you know, want to jump out and they go, okay, I did a mile this week, I'll do two miles next week, and next the week after that, I'll do three miles, you know, and then I'll do four, and then I'll do five, and then I'll do six. You know, it's like, whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> you know, as increasing distance too quickly can be a big problem. So uh, overuse injuries and pain uh, a lot of times come from that. Now, uh, you know, I think most people can start off with, uh, you know, close to a three-mile walk at least, you know, as most people will be able to make it that, especially if it's not on consecutive days, they have a day of rest in between, all right? So make one day per week the long day, all right? So I mean, you can start with that, start with that, and then go up 10% each time. So maybe you start with three miles, you know, of a, of a walk, and then you go, you know, three miles and a little bit, and you know, and you're three miles and a, and a quarter, <laughs> you know, three miles and a half, you know, and uh, and build your your distance up a little bit that way. Also, you're going to want to do the building speed too, all right, uh, on some of that. So sometimes you might be working on that instead of the long day. Maybe it's just a pick up the speed day. You know, instead of going actually farther, <clears throat> uh, you know, a 10% increase per week is a good rule of thumb for that. Um, is take number seven. Every run is the same route, distance, and speed. All right, so maybe it's, maybe you're a treadmill one. You're always on the same road. You got the same path that you take all the time. The body gets very, very in the rut on that. All right, and so you want to do ch you want to change that up a little bit so that way your foot gets to land differently. If you're always running on the road, you got to remember the road has that crown to it, so you're always running on a slight angle. That causes a lot of problems on one side of the body a lot of times, and so so you want to be changing that up a little bit. All right, so biggest consequence on that usually is most less effective training. Uh, but a potential overuse injury. So not as big as the other six issues and certainly not as big as those first three, you know, on that. But the correction there is run on the road, run on a trail, run on a path, run on the treadmill, do some sidewalks, intervals, faster, uh, fast, fast runs, so you know, to a different speeds, so a faster run, a more of a steady, slower run, a short run, a long run, you know, to be changing that up a little bit with the body so that way it's getting something different, you know, out of some of this stuff and you'll be able to do it for much longer. So this goes for, again, for running or walking. All right, sample training week right here. You'll see, uh, you know, on here we've got uh, we've got Monday. You know, we've got um, a calm run slash walk. You know, three miles. All right, and so you're not trying to go crazy bonkers. You're just trying to get a little bit of work in. All right, so you're just getting in there, have a nice time, and get a nice stretch in. All right, Tuesday, this is where a great time for strength training. So you do your strength training, this cross training thing. It's really good for our bodies. It will actually help you run faster too, you know, but, uh, but certainly decrease pain in the joints and those kind of things. Uh, interval work. So maybe Wednesday would be your interval work day. So you do a run slash walk, either 30 seconds fast and one minute slow. So maybe you run for 30 seconds, you walk for a minute, you know, or, 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 or jog, you know, and then walk or, uh, or uh, run and then go back to a jog. You know, and so it depends on your level, but kind of use your own gauge there. For what is fast, what is slow, you know, for you and do 30 seconds in one minute. Go for about 30 minutes. So don't worry about the distance you cover. Just do it for amount of time. All right. Thursday, another strike training day. Friday, non-running cardio. All right. So, so you got a non-running cardio day, you know, just to change it up on the body. We've got a great one, uh, you know, that, uh, that you could use, uh, you know, again, if you, uh, if, uh, if you're so inclined to, to join in on this, um, and then a, a Saturday would be like that long run or maybe the faster run. Maybe that's the one where you do like your, you actually do a practice 5k once a week, you know, and you just try to get a little bit better. Um, you know, Sarah and I did that for a while. I, we did, I did, I did, I did no running. I just ran once a week, uh, you know, and I would just run a 5k and I would just kind of keep trying to go a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker on that run. And I did improve. I did improve. And you know, that was enough to help me out. And then all, all the other base work that I do, I'm kind of always ready for physical activity. And that does help too, you know, but it is nice to get that specific action. If you're going to be doing that, you know, especially if you want to do that at, uh, at speed, you know, that you want to make sure you're ready. And then Sunday, a rest and stretch, kind of a yoga-like day, you know, would be really, really good there. Finally, timeline expectations. Most people can complete a 5K without any training, all right? You don't have to run. You can walk. It'll take over an hour, you know, if you haven't done any training at all. You know, so be prepared for about an hour being out there. Uh, you know, three miles per hour, 3.0 miles per hour is, is a possible walking speed for most people. All right, so we walk at like four. Uh, four miles per hour, they got, they, got a, they got a quicker walk, you know, that they can do. And so it's very possible, you know, for most people to step up and do a three mile walk. All right. So just do that. 
Maybe that's all you need to do, you know, for this. All right, but maybe you go, ah, I want to get better. I want to get more in shape. I want to get more fit, more of those kind of things. So doing some prep is going to be good for that. If you have 50 or more pounds to lose, it will be much harder to do and harder on your joints. All right, so you just need to be aware of that. All right, and so you want to make sure you're careful, you know, that, uh, that you're not pounding, you know, too hard because when you have extra weight on there, it is a lot more impact, a lot more grinding, a lot more work <laughs> in those areas. And so losing that weight, certainly makes it uh, easier to to complete a 5k and so that may be part of of uh, of your training routine there a four week prep is good for completing a 5k in a confident way an eight week prep i think is better for completing a 5k in a faster way <laughs> all right and so and again you don't even have to prepare at all you could do it no matter what but sometimes it's good to have a date out there and you kind of build for it that's what we do a lot of times when we go to when we set ourselves to up to do a 5k we go here's the date and because we're going to do it, I'm going to prep a little bit for it. I'm going to do a couple, you know, prepping, uh, prepping weekends leading up to it or something at least. The more concerned you are about doing this, the longer you should prep. All right. So, so if it's coming up, you know, soon, you know, get on it, <laughs> get on it right away. If you got a little bit of time, you know, get on it right away. <laughs> and then you got more time, you know, to enjoy and do. All right. So <laughs> thank you for taking part. Uh, in this and hopefully you do uh, you take part in the the virtual 5k you donate and if you want to you know we can send you some resources or they uh, sorry uh, they, they may send you some resources once they know that you've donated or signed up for the community build you know for this what a great cause uh, to build a playground that we all can have fun in you know i have two little girls as you can see in the picture and i know the power of playgrounds i mean we drive past a new playgrounds like oh, what's that? You know, so this is an exciting place. And if we build a playground like this, it's going to help people from very far away because people will travel for a resource like this. All right. So please donate to the cause. Sign up for the community build and we'll get you that, that, that good starter strength training routine a non running cardio workout and several stretching injury prevention videos to help you out as well. All right. So have fun. Be safe. God bless. This is Jeremy Tall Trainer saying thank you.